two pedestal feet, main sleeve, remote control and instruction book pack, that is the TV from the front side and the back. Remote control and accessories pack. Paperwork and quick setup guide. Cable retention clips there, and they're the two cable guides. That's the mains retention clip at the back of the TV. Magic remote, AA batteries for the magic remote, and some self tapping screws. Closely looking at the Magic Remote, power on and off at the top, channel number buttons, guide button, audio description and subtitles, volume up and down, channels up and down, mute button, voice command button, home button, that is the input list or source button, cursor arrows left, right, up, down and enter, also that acts as a scroller wheel so you can scroll up and down the menus, back button, settings button, hold it down, it takes you to all settings, Coloured buttons for apps and media playback, then quick access, Netflix, Prime, Disney Plus, Rakuten, LG channels and Alexa. Flip it over, bit of pressure and AA batteries into the back. Also figure 8 mains lead, straight input to the TV and a UK plug. At the top, list of included accessories on the various sizes. Methods of unpacking the TV across the various sizes and info here, installing those pedestal feet and attaching your mains cable with those cable retention clips and cable management guides. On the back there, details a list of the inputs on the TV, important dimensions from the 43 to the 75 inch, bit of info there regarding some of the LG wall brackets and some info there on the Visa patterns for the various size TVs. Okay, two plastic feet described as rocky black, slight sort of grain textured finish there, nothing big, nice and simple, through holes there to attach the screws into the TV and secure them. TV's laid flat using the box and the polythene bag as an impromptu workbench, I'll just zoom in and we'll have a look at these clips. So we can see here where the mains input is, we've got a mains retention clip, so small hole there, that just pushes in, clicks in, and then it opens up. You put the mains lead where it says AC in. And then this just clips closed, he says. There we go. So it just secures the mains lead so you don't pull it out and arc electricity by accident. To release it again, push the tab down there. And it should open up and you can take that back out. To the side of it here, you've got the foot that's going to go into here. Then a cable management guide can click in place. So we can guide the mains cable down the back of the leg. Then we can guide the cable down the back and that just keeps it in place, keeps it a bit neater. For the other side, where you may have your HDMI cables and so on running from the connections, you can do the same thing there. You do have to give them a bit of push and a wiggle for it to be retained. TV is marked B there, corresponding foot marked B, and it's also shaped there to go into that slot, he says, like so. And then we've got a through hole through here for our self tapping screw to go in. So two self tapping screws, one for each foot or leg. Should be nice and solid with the corresponding foot marked A into there and a self tapping screw into the hole. Looking at the connections running down the side we've got CI card slot reader, USB 1, HDMI 1 and 2. HDMI 2 is enhanced audio return channel so plug your sound bar or sound system into that port it will feed the audio back to the device and also control it then we've got terrestrial aerial tuner and satellite or freesat going horizontally into the back 
HDMI 3, so three HDMI's in total, USB 2, wired internet or LAN, and digital optical audio out. Onto the dimensions, this is the 43 inch model. Most annoying thing will be the wide feet. Across those wide feet, it is 80 centimeters or just under 31 and a half inches. So I'll put a card up there now. Uh, you can put a universal pedestal base on this or pedestal stand up, central stand, swivel it and whatever. And it cures the problem of having to change a TV table. Uh, width across the top of the TV, 96 and a half centimeters or 38 inches. Whatever it stood on to the bottom of the TV, six centimeters or two and three eighths of an inch. Looking at the TV from the back, it's got a 200 by 200 mil piece amount. M6 bolts, probably 10 to 15 mil. If it helps anyone from the bottom of the TV to the middle of the first visa mount hole is 214 millimeters. TV is now connected to wide internet aerial and mains. No screen protector on this model, just a couple of bits of gump stuck on the front, which I'll remove. Press the OK button, wheel, on your remote. OK. Language. English. Checked. Next. Button. Audio guidance is currently turned on to assist the visually impaired. Do you want? Yes. Button. No. OK. Audio assistance is now off. Two ways to set up the TV. You can either do it step by step with a remote or if you've got the LG FinQ app on your phone, you can transfer your Wi-Fi account details from your LG account and so on alter the TV. Uh, I'm going to do it with the remote control step by step. That's my wide network. So scroll down to the bottom. If it lets me, it's going a bit laggy. I'm just going to agree to all install, but you can make your own choices. Okay, so my method, I've only connected Arial, so I'll go TV only. Pop your postcode in for regional programming. Device installation type, so to get the best audio quality, specify whether it's wall mounted or on a stand, I am on a stand. Automatic software update, I'm leaving on, personal choice. Okay, program tuning. I've connected an aerial, so that is classed as antenna. Obviously, if you've got satellite connected, you would pick satellite. So I'll pop back in five when this is finished. Oh, digital only search, sorry. Smart retuning, if you're doing that on a day-to-day -day thing, will replace channels that are no longer there and update new ones. Digital only search will just replace the lot. Uh, first time install, it's digital tuning or digital only. So I'll pop back in five when that's complete. All right, tuning is now complete. Next message you get, would you like to add extra channels to your free view list that come over the internet? So you may as well, because they're free as well. Uh, and it's just supplementing what you're getting from your aerial using your broadband or internet connection. 
Uh, continue, you can change your choice later. Region select for me, it is Yorkshire. And you've got to wait till that says done. It's just sorting through the programs. If you go skip, it won't save them. There we go, down to done. LG account, so at some point, if you want to download other apps that are not pre-installed, you'll need to sign into an LG account or make an account and sign in to download further apps. Okay, so we can add some more recommended apps and services. I'm going to add iPlayer, Prime, scan your QR code with your phone to link your Prime account. All right. Now TV, YouTube, LG channels actually in bad. It's IP channels over the internet. Chromecast built in. You may as well add that. Cast your Android device, all that business and I'll accept the terms of service. That's now going to install those apps. And if it looks weird on my camera, the picture, it looks all right to the human eye. So I think that's camera trickery. YouTube turn on via Wi-Fi. I don't want to do that. Uses extra electricity. And if I want to cast YouTube videos to my TV, I'll turn it on first. Okay, so I'm just going to go straight to the store mode so we can try out the retail demo. So support, home or store, down to store mode. Yes, dim my camera down a touch. Did you get three points at this stage? I mean, it's pretty hard not to qualify, isn't it, for, for the big nation? Back to the home menu. Going to go all the way across to the media player. Okay, all the way across to the media player. Press enter. Okay, a couple of demos there.
Mexico. Back to home. Settings. And all settings. And to support, home or store mode, and back to home. Back again, and while we're looking at the menus, may as well go through them at the same time. So right at the top there, you've got your software updates, where you can auto update or check for updates. Some people turn auto updates on, check for them as and when they've read up to see what they're getting, fine. And under general, you've got some AI service there, so you can do AI picture, AI sound, and things like that, and it will optimize the picture and sound depending on the content. Some stuff does a good job on, some stuff not so good. I tend to just set my own pitch settings, leave it at that. External devices, so HDMI settings, I usually turn my CEC on because I want it to interact with my soundbar, PS5, SkyQ, whatever other devices I've got and be controlled automatically. Back out of there. System, additional settings. So under the home settings there, power on screen, I always want it to come onto my recent input, not onto the home screen that we can see behind the menu. So if I was last on Freeview, it'll come on on Freeview, or it'll come on on Netflix, not onto the home screen. Home promotion and content recommendation, it's up to you. You can turn those off if you like as well. And that's it under there. Energy saving, turn off altogether because it will sacrifice picture to try and save a couple of pence a year and it is minimal the savings having that on so I wouldn't bother. Auto power off at home, like I say, set mine to two hours so if the kids leave it running, it'll turn itself off. Install, it could be on all day so I'll turn that off. That's your inactivity timer so if you don't press a button for a while, thinks you've gone out, turns the TV off. Also sound. So under sound, I've got it set to TV speaker and optical out. Obviously, if you've got a sound bar, it'll go to HDMI ARC for the audio return channel to interact with the sound bar. Under advanced settings, where have we got eARC support, turn on if you've got an eARC device. If your device isn't enhanced audio return channel compatible, turn that off or you'll get distorted sound. Digital sound output if you're using a soundbar or AV system also wants to be set to pass through. That way if you're watching Netflix in Dolby Digital, it'll pass that Dolby Digital through to the sound device in Dolby Digital, not PCM. And also picture you've got there, auto power save mode. For the demo, I'm going to set it to standard. Okay, so I'll go to live TV and we'll check out some normal TV content. Yeah, what's in it for Mr. Right. Kim? Like Russia, his country is under strict international sanctions. The two men, pariahs in arms. But the North Korean leader has his own ambitious plans for nuclear weapons and space technology. Great. A recent spy satellite failed. Russia, for all its limitations, can still offer vital assistance. North Korean TV has firmly set the mood for this high-profile visit. Russian martial music conjuring the sort of patriotic fervor audiences in Pyongyang are used to. And the video screens making the agenda abundantly clear. Very These late, are two men. Uh, Pyongyang time, but he has a very busy day ahead of him. He is expected to uh, attend a concert, a parade at the Kim Il Song Square is being planned, uh, and also he's expected to visit the Trinity of Life Giving Orthodox Church, the only Orthodox Church in Pyongyang, and of course a lot of face-to-face -face time with the uh, North Korean leader. All of these crucial. What in your view has gone wrong? Okay, a quick look at the TV guide. Oh, absolutely. 
Well, I mean, it's complete good. Well, if you, if, if you go back to his chancellorship, everything he did within COVID was wrong. He would argue he gave lots and lots of people the money needed to feed their family. All the criticisms and uh, criticisms that I made of Rishi during his chancellorship. Slowly loading up. Okay, you can see we've got that vertical yellow or orange line that's indicating the current time. We're on BBC News and Weather. So we can go across, see what's on later. Or we can go down incrementally, step by step, using the cursor arrows. Or if you use the channel up and down buttons, I can go to see what's on next. Financially, if they needed it next time round, if I think they've done an amazing job. Nice to talk to you and thanks for having me. It's a pleasure, thank you. Okay, let that load up. I don't like Love Island, but if I wanted new, extraordinary, press the OK button. I can schedule a recording or a reminder. So if I just want it to remind me it's coming on, set the reminder. If I attach a hard drive disk to it, I can schedule a recording. Okay, come out of there and back up. So if I wanted to go to BBC News and Weather for copyright reasons, I'll press the OK button and it should come full screen. There we go. Quick bit of sports coming up. Eventually. Bit of 4K football. We come the two teams, Manchester United against Inter in the International Champions Cup. Inter Milan to Pogba. Sure, they're encouraging him to shoot and he will have a goal. Pogba does get it back. Rashford, Pogba. What's he going to do? I don't know how he got that far to be honest. Okay, here for United, sure. Bring it ball into the middle, nearly finds Rashford, just a little touch, took it behind the England, and he finished level on points of third place Atalanta in Serie A last season, Inter. Brusovic, swept deep, and uh, was missed by the highlight. And it goes towards Kenny Rubini, and Saka was back there, I think, to head that away. Pogba back towards his own goal, and one of the Saka up the right. Pogba's up as well. He leaves it brilliant on the end of the line. Brilliant skill for Pogba. Where's he going? Wonderful. Why not? Good take from Andanovic. He's right. Sure. Did well when the party was outside from the team. One second chop down well in the edge of the penalty area. Just throw it in now, I expect. And by towards that corner, Handanovic forced him to a save. Another marvellous ball up for the teenager who's making a name for himself. Sure is. Manchester United lead the game with 15 minutes to go. What a wonderful finish! So much talk coming out of Old Trafford about the quality of this young man. Not just from his youth coaches. That's it. Manchester United get the win. And this man has done it again. Mason Greenwood with the winning goal. Credit to Ubisoft for this one. Star Wars Outlaws. Official game trailer. These are dangerous times. At least that's what I hear. The Empire? They're everywhere. But the world here belongs to the syndicates.
If I want to survive, I have to play their game. Looks like I'm all in. She's in here somewhere. On second thought, I'm out. <laughs> for you a way out, okay? Get off my ship, Jalen. Give me a chance. You're gonna have to trust me. It'll be dangerous, risky. But if you pull this off, you'll never look over your shoulder again. <laughs> shows no mercy. But it's a big galaxy out there, and I'm gonna risk it all. Star Wars Outlaws, coming 2024. Okay, credit again to Ubisoft for that one. Okay, quickly looking at the home menu now. We've got the account settings up at the top, notifications, settings, cog will take you to the quick settings, go to the cog again, we'll take you to all settings, search there, the free view guide, home office, games, music, home hub, sports, accessibility, or you can edit that and make it suit yourself. Going down, we've got Netflix, iPlayer, ITVX, All4, My5, Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV, you can also mirror your iPhone or Android. Rakuten, YouTube, Roxy, Shoptime, BBC Sounds, Sports Alerts, Home Hub, Web Browser, put a cheap Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, do some basic web browsing. Media Play, you can stick your memory sticks in or NAS drives and browse that as well. Or look at uh, pictures if you've got holiday pictures on a memory stick, Alexa and camera. So I'm assuming you'd have to attach a separate camera to that to use a camera. Edit that app list to make it your own. Add or remove apps. Recent imports, free on LG channels. There's loads of free stuff there to look at. Going down from there, live TV. Quick bit of highlights across there. Now streaming from heading from Apple TV, Disney Plus, Rakuten, YouTube, Roxy, iPlayer, Prime, My5, ITVX, Channel 4 and so on. And some of the highlights from each of those channels. Shop time, life's good hub, the best crime and thriller movies from Apple. Is it all Apple? Yeah, it is. Popular cinema. And again, there's some of that stuff there from the LG free channels. And I checked it out at home and there is quite a bit of content there now. It's building up because it was a bit basic at first and there wasn't much there. And you can also edit this whole list and make that your own. So all in all, I think in the UK uh, on launch, this is it's, it's retailing about 379, which is not bad actually. Uh, so cheap 4K entry level TV, 43 inch, not bad for a bedroom or gaming, stuff like that. Um, sound is good, but TV is quite thick. Uh, so it's one of those compromises. Picture looks really good on bright stuff actually, and the 4K stuff look really good to the eye. Some of the dark stuff you do see the backlight shining through, but then again, it's not going to be an OLED for that one. Eh? And that is all for now.